Hey there. I'm Loxton, host of this here show called Noggin, where gamers use their heads. I haven't actually said the catchphrase in like four years now, though, because it's wincy AF. But yeah, we think too hard about video games. 90% of the time, it's just Pokemon. But anyway, years ago, I did this massive series where I stated that this was the end of Pokemon, and I claimed that all of the lore and alchemy symbolism predicted that after the Sun and Moon games, we would go back to Gen 1, and afterwards, Pokemon would never be the same again. Maybe they'll even get rid of some. Change up the formula a tad. <sighs> there are loads of folks who say my predictions were absolutely wrong, but... <laughs> It's none of my business. But I'm not digging a horse out of its grave to start beating it again for nothing. <laughs> a Dr. Lava approached me with some newly dug up details found in an old blog post from Takeshi Shudo, chief writer of the Pokemon anime original series that he had translated. This blog post revealed that there was indeed a plan to end Pokemon. Like, period. The end. It's over. Ah, and since I'm all about that the end of Pokemon business, he wanted me to spread the word to everyone. Isn't that right, Dr. Lava? That's right, Loxton. As I was going through Takeshi Shudo's blog, having some interesting bits translated into English, I came across his dark plans to end Pokemon, and I thought you'd be the right man for the job. I guess you could say on my channel, I mostly cover the beginnings of Pokemon, like Pokemon design origins, game development, and scrapped Pokemon designs, which your viewers should check out sometime if they're into that kind of thing. But not before they finish watching this video, of course, since you and I put so much work into it. So take it away, Loxton. Back over to you. Links to his site are below, and he's also got a cool Twitter. But let's get into the meat of the topic at hand. How was Pokemon planned to actually end? Let's get into it. Takeshi Shuda was the chief writer of the original series of the Pokemon anime, and the sole writer of the first three Pokemon movies, and he took his job very seriously. Through various interviews and even this blog post, he talks about his field research. He has to write a ship captain character, he'll go to a seaside bar to find out what they're like, how they talk, etc. This happened to work out well for him. Even though his doctor told him to stop drinking, he really just couldn't stop, as this blog post also revealed that while writing, more often than not, he was under the influence. This field research really was just him finding an excuse to fill his craving for booze. I'm sure you've heard the saying, boss makes a dollar, I make a dime, that's why I go to the bar on company time, right? <laughs> Alcoholism. <laughs> Or should I say, alcoholism? <laughs> I probably shouldn't be joking about this. It's what likely caused his early ending. Hmm. In his own words, alcohol helps me make sense of all the lines of dialogue spinning around in my head. And for clearing my mind when it's feeling fuzzy and scattered. For some reason, when I'm drinking, I can ask total strangers the peskiest questions and it doesn't end up in a brawl. We don't really get into arguments either. It must be this kind of mentality that says, people are people, I am me. So no matter what someone says, it doesn't bother you. And if I can't drink, I take tranquilizers. Of course, the ones you can buy normally in a pharmacy, not illegal substances. When I get a little bit high, it helps me sort out all of my confused thoughts. However, when it comes to alcohol and drugs, you need to know your limit. If you don't, I advise you stay away from them altogether. Honestly, that last sentence is good advice for everyone. I advise you to stay away from them altogether. Oftentimes, if you need these things to function, it's because you started them already. Never start them, and you'll never require them later. But anyway, this is why the first three movies and the first two generations of the anime feel quite a bit different from the rest of the later movies and seasons. They weren't written by a drunken high guy, like the first were. 
But as he said, the alcohol helped him think more clearly. When you're the lead writer for such a massive franchise, you have just constant whirls of ideas flowing around your brain all the time. Heck, I just write YouTube videos and I have the same problem. But back to the blog post, he talks about his dislike for higher ups at production companies getting in the way of his original visions, specifically recalling a critique of the script for the second movie, where one asked, where is the scene that makes you cry? As if every movie needs one or it's not worth producing. But back to his own words, in any case, the script for Lugia's explosive birth the original title of the second movie, got approved without too many revisions. Then, almost three years passed, but the new game still wasn't finished, and meanwhile the anime characters are just wandering around the Orange Islands. But despite everything, the anime and merchandise all keep selling. But just how long can you go on with the same formula? A new Pokémon appears, Ash catches it, he fights other trainers at a gym or the league tournament, Team Rocket tries to stand in his way, he overcomes the obstacle, and wins. Looking at it from the production meeting's point of view, there's the scene that makes you cry, there's one that makes you laugh, there's one spectacular showy one, and I feel like it's all just becoming a repetition of the same formula. For better or for worse, there's no room for these characters to grow. Children grow up quickly. I wanted to create a story that keeps up with their growth. I want Ash to show some character development as a character. I want him to one day look back on these past days of Pokémon with nostalgia. That's the entire reason I made Team Rocket. All the Pokémon, Ash, and all of his friends interact with each other. I was even planning out the final episode where they would finally arrive at some kind of conclusion. And here we begin uncovering the original planned ending for Pokémon. Fueled by delay after delay of the next Pokémon games, Gold and Silver, as well as Ash and the gang just meandering around the Orange Islands, not really seeing anything new anymore. So at first, the movie Mewtwo Strikes Back was planned as the end, to go out with a bang, but his original vision in this case was altered, as in it was completely removed. Originally, at the end of the first movie, months and years pass, Ash grows old, and one day, suddenly, he looks back on his past. He remembers his childhood fondly, the adventures he had with his amazing Pokémon, the friendship, the coexistence. Maybe Ash wasn't able to experience these things in his later life. However, as a kid, there was Pikachu, and lots of other Pokémon. Jesse and James, and Mewtwo, and so much more. Elderly Ash remembers everything that happened during his adventures as a young boy, and now he can hear his mother's voice. Go to sleep already. You're setting off on your journey tomorrow. The next morning, he is woken up by his mother, a young boy again, leaving his house excited to start a new adventure. He's going on a journey not to catch Pokémon or become a Pokémon master, but to discover the meaning of existence, to discover how to coexist with others. That have been quite the dramatic ending for Ash, for Pokémon even, but it was not to be. Still though, he tried to have the second movie not star Ash or have any of the recurring characters, but again, the higher-ups demanded that that at least stay the same. But this was not the only planned end for the series, heavens no. You could call this the good ending, because there was another he had come up with. A darker ending was in his mind, one he was planning on using for the fourth movie if he ever got around to writing that one. But as he states, his idea for the fourth movie was to reuse his idea for the final episode of the anime. Here it is. In this movie, the Pokémon would stage a rebellion, much like Spartacus in ancient Rome. Although at first glance Pokémon appear to be friends with humans, they would realize they're actually being used like slaves, which would lead to an uprising. Pikachu would wind up leading the revolt and end up fighting with Ash. Team Rocket, who are in possession of lots of sinister Pokémon, including Meowth, who can translate the Pokémon language into human speech, would try to mediate the conflict but they'd do a poor job of interpreting and only make things worse. Oh man, so that Pokemon fan game by PETA was right. At least in some alternate timeline where Takeshi got his way. In his own words, continuing into perpetuity is the series objective. 
If this episode could ever be produced, I think it would literally have to be the last episode ever. A couple of days after the big script meeting for Lugia's explosive birth, I was sipping some booze at my home in Tokyo. I was in a bad mood for some reason. I was irritated with the series for continuing. I realize it's strange to consider that a problem, especially when lots of other anime are cancelled after only one season. In any case, it seemed like that was the moment to decide the future of Pokémon, which at that point had two movies. So I called the director and asked him, how many more years are you thinking this will go on? At least ten, he replied. Two more years is my limit. I don't think I can create any more Pokémon episodes. I said. As I write this blog, Pokemon is now almost 500 episodes long. The series has been going on for over 10 years. Everything happened exactly as the director said it would. It must have been a lot of work maintaining it. Everything I'm writing here now, they're just my own simple thoughts. After three or four years, a new Pokemon adventure with a new main hero should begin, with its own topics. This new Pokemon should adapt to its times. Ten years ago, there was some kid watching Pokémon. That kid's tastes will change as he gets older, and someday he'll be an adult bringing his own children to the cinema. Hopefully, he'll watch Pokémon and consider it a movie fit for adults. That would make me very happy. However, if Pokémon stays the same year after year, it's hard to imagine it touching on topics that are relevant with the times. Still, the games and the merchandise have steadily taken root in our everyday lives. If the Pokémon anime were to end after going on for over ten years, I'm sure the ending would be completely different than how I imagined its final episode more than ten years ago. After the director told me ten more years, I started obsessing all the time about how to continue Pokémon indefinitely, and at some point, I passed out and was taken to the hospital. Lying there, I came up with a story for the third movie, but not The Spell of the Unknown, which was what ended up actually becoming the third movie. The third Pokémon movie would be the last movie of the Pokémon series that he worked on, though his original vision for it was vastly different, as in it was about dinosaurs. Like, not dinosaur Pokémon, actual dinosaurs and Pokémon. Uh, but that's that's for another time. Perhaps the drastic changes to his original script which he co-wrote with Hideki Sonoda for this movie was his final straw before just being done with the series. His many ideas to advance the anime, to have it grow with its audience, never came to fruition. And his two ideas about how to end the series never happened. Though perhaps... Perhaps there is a lost script out there somewhere. But a mere ten months after writing this blog post, Takeshi Shudo was found collapsed at a train station in Nara, Japan. He was rushed to the hospital, but was pronounced dead the following day, October 29th, 2010. The official cause of death was a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which are most commonly caused by high blood pressure along with smoking, alcoholism, or cocaine use. We can't be certain what caused his subarachnoid hemorrhage, but considering the man's history with needing alcohol and tranquilizers to write the Pokémon anime and movies, and just how many episodes there are, well, it's safe to say that it was likely that. And as he used these to write Pokémon, he also likely then used them to write his plans to end Pokémon. And thus, became the story you never knew. Thanks for watching, and again, big thanks to Dr. Lava for finding and translating this. And until next time, keep using your noggin above the influence. For the most part, anyway. <laughs>